All right. And then I, I just want to thank you uh, for being here. We got a wide variety of people. And also, I want to thank everybody. I, I'm truly blessed to work with a world-class group of people. And, and I, I really enjoy it. I get to travel around the world working with world-class people. And as Joel said, or as, as uh, Jason said earlier, we have a world-class team of, of graduate students as well. So, and, and we're, we're going to, we've got some other things coming that that group's even going to expand. As you heard with Chad Polk and some of the statistics people, uh, we're going to continue to grow. That said, uh, Karini and Mariana here, I got a little story. Notice that logo they're wearing here? That's a University of Minnesota logo. <laughs> and there's a story behind that. When we were out at the bar that night, people were asking them, are they truly K-State grad students? <laughs> They'd never seen a K-State grad student wearing other than purple. They did redeem themselves with, with K-State shirts. And, and so uh, we're really proud to have them on staff. And I'm sure they're never going to wear a University of Minnesota shirt again. So. <laughs> And I'm an alumni there, too, so. <laughs> anyway, moving over to some data. Uh, you know, as a true veterinarian, uh, I'm not going to talk about health, and I'm not going to talk about nutrition from that standpoint. We're going to talk about management and some of the simple things that happen out on the farm. You know, how many people have been in production systems, especially on a wean to finish barn, and there's six tons of feed left in a bin? What does it get do? It gets fed to the nursery pigs. And, you know, and we go to all this precise feed budgeting, and uh, then we feed finishing pigs to the nursery pigs. So uh, we actually had, uh, this was a question that came talking about relevance from Ken Odie, uh, New Fashion Pork, uh, Kyle Coble, and, and some of our graduate students got together and put together, and Chad Hasted, uh, also one of our nutrition grads, uh, and said, what happens? It, what is the economics of keeping that finishing feed in the nursery phase? And what we did was set up this study. We had a control where we did it right during the nursery phase. And then we had, uh, where we had a set of tandem bends, we could blend that feed in over different phases. And you can see we've got phase two, three, and four, uh, putting it in at different phases of the nursery. And, uh, and as you'd expect here from the data standpoint, uh, you know, it was less impact as we put it into the later nursery phase on, on growth performance as the nutrient intake of those pigs. Of course, from a logistics standpoint, you know, you want to blend it in earlier in the nursery phase if you are going to blend it at all. I think the real key take home message is though they put some economics on it, what it hurt them in performance. This is on a 1200 head pig, 1200 head pig group. You can see here uh, we've got uh, almost $1,500 or over a dollar a pig. And in their system, it costs them about just under $300 to reclaim uh, some feed from a bin or about 23 cents a head. And so the key take home message here was it was a lot more cost effective to reclaim the feed than just feed it up during the nursery phase and, and take the growth performance hit there. Uh, moving in here, moving on from a management standpoint, I just wanted to, to acknowledge here another one of the things. Uh, working with an undergrad, this is Cheyenne Holder. We've got, you know, I got to give credit to Hyatt Frobos. He's the one that really started our undergrad uh, program. Um, and then we've got Corey that's taken it on, and John DeYoung and, and uh, Annie uh, have all been helping with our undergrads. And now we're going to see Cassie moving into her new role. We're going to see a lot more undergrads in our program as well. So we're really proud, and, and we've got. Uh, Kia and Annie are products of those, and now they're, they're well within our grad program as well. So we see this as a key part of continuing to build our program. So just want to give a good shout out to Cheyenne and, and Corey on this project. 
Uh, really a nice project here from the standpoint of space. I know this is a question that's been studied for many, many years. It's interesting. I work with a production system that just built a new research finisher. What was the first study they did? They did a space study in the finisher. So following up on that, we're still continuing to answer that question. And, and this is an interesting one where we had uh, what we take on the, on, uh, at market weight, what we uh, give uh, square footage for heavy market weight, really heavy market weights, 280, 290 pounds, versus a typical industry stocking density, uh, maybe a little, even a little denser. And then we have two treatments here where we have uh, looking at starting out at 6.3 square foot and then adjusting the space based on the K value. And, and that's kind of a standard of practice from a welfare standpoint that's, that's used in many circles in order to calculate the adequate amount of space. And so here we left the number of pigs uh, the same and uh, adjusted the gate as they got to that K value versus uh, here's the other method that in a production system what you would do is you would remove pigs as in you would do marketing events and to reduce that, take that space pressure off. Uh, and we can see the first thing here is whether we use the gate or the removal, there was no difference in performance there. So we can see from a modeling perspective whether we move the gate or, or model it from a removal standpoint, we don't have any difference. The interesting, and, and first off, you can see that when we had more space, of course, we get more growth. The really interesting thing here is even though we followed the K value with these two treatments, we did have a suppression of growth. And that's a follow-up on a couple of different studies uh, that show that the K value probably isn't quite as predictive on the, uh, as we think it is, and that's where uh, Josh Floor in his meta-analysis and those kind of things is, has really tried to tease that out from the literature and has done a nice job of building a modeling approach uh, that takes into account some advances above the K value from a, from a statistical standpoint. And also, so we've taken that to a more sophisticated level on the statistics side, but you've, we've also Mike and Josh and, and, and the whole crew here have done a great job, too, of pulling that into a usable spreadsheet, too, that, that along with a bunch of the other spreadsheet calculators on our website, you can see here, uh, we've got this laid out that underlying the engine under here is, are some sophisticated equations, but on, on the front side, we've got that into a user-friendly format. And one of the advances here uh, in that uh, from his meta-analysis and, and from the analysis of the data, we clearly know the impact of stocking density on, on growth rate. The, what's kind of an advance here is, is the impact on feed efficiency. And that really changes the economics of space depending on, on market price and, and uh, some of the scenarios that we, that we work under. Also, uh, from a management standpoint, moving into, uh, this is given uh, Arkin and, and Kelly, a couple of graduate students that have done an excellent job focusing on a, on a, a needs assessment and literature review, pork board funded, uh, have this published now in a peer reviewed format uh, and following up there. You know, we, we, with the new plants being built, they're being built for heavyweight pigs because of the efficiency and those kinds of things. Uh, we're we're going to continue to see uh, heavier and heavier market weights. And, we're, and when you look at the literature, uh, it's been surprising, or maybe not so surprising, but there's there's limited amount of literature. In other words, you guys, from a graduate student standpoint, there's plenty of work to do out here. Uh, and, and we've got plenty of questions and those kind of things. But we think we're going to have with these new plants, uh, we're going to be able to take market weights up even further and, and going to need to know some information on how to handle those. So stay tuned there. Uh, we're focusing on that area as well. 
And as I mentioned, I, as I travel around the world, uh, you know, we've really got some production systems uh, that are beginning to differentiate and continue to get more and more. Uh, I think some of the productivity analysis is showing that. Uh, the best are getting better and better. Uh, and then there's a, there's a plateau out there and people are separating themselves. And just want to give a shout out uh, here. Bob Goodband has done a great job of taking our graduate students in there uh, and, and studying. It's, it's really reflective of, of we're, we're not just trying to study problem areas. We're trying to study with the best and try to get better and even better. And, and uh, Thomas's have, have been really supportive of that endeavor. On the health and productivity side as well, uh, again, some of the production systems we're seeing. Uh, this is one that Joel and I work with, uh, going uh, antimicrobial free, running a roughly 3% wean to finish mortality, use no feed additive antimicrobials, uh, limited amounts of groups of injectables and, and in the water too, telling us uh, uh, that we can do this on a large scale now. And we're beginning to see that uh, in, in, in several different areas as well. This, is, this has been quite a road. Uh, they started on biosecurity uh, focusing and putting in Danish entries uh, into finishers in the middle of Iowa in 2008. And everybody thought that was a pretty radical idea. Uh, now that's becoming pretty standard practice across the industry, uh, with the, especially with PED and those kind of things. So we've got some production systems out there that we can learn from yet and, and bring that back to you and back into our research. This is just illustrating uh, from a global perspective, uh, some of the production systems that we get to work with. Uh, this is the drug room for 175,000 sow farrow to finish system. Basically, they have like one pallet of stuff that they're using. I mean, that is like nothing. So illustrating that this can be done on a large scale and we've got some, some things to learn in our U.S. industry uh, as well and, and that, that we have a ways to go as well. DFD management, I know we're going to have a, a, a good talk from Mike Appley this afternoon uh, and what we've been focusing on getting ready for it uh, in the last few years with several of our pr production systems is the big thing we've been focusing on. The easiest way to manage VFDs is just don't use a bunch of that stuff. Uh, that, that really cuts out a lot, of, uh, a lot of paperwork and those kind of things. And as I mentioned, biosecurity. Uh, pretty fanatical about that. Uh, I've, I've, I'm lucky enough, or lucky or unlucky enough, I work with some high health production systems. One is in the middle of an African swine fever area. Uh, and another one is in a country that, that has a high health production system that's in the middle of foot and mouth disease country. Uh, that was the first place where I'd been given a pocket of clothes that I had to wear from the hotel just to the vehicle to go to the farm before I had another clothes change. I mean, our, our, their biosecurity was probably better than our BL3 level biosecurity at our BL3 uh, building over here. Uh, so we've, we've learned some good things. and and. And recently, I was within a production system in the U.S. for the first time where I was provided a packet of clothes at the hotel and had to wear those out into the production system. So we're, we've got some things on biosecurity that are coming our way. And of course, uh, again, increasing weaning age. Roger Main really taught us that uh, coming uh, from that perspective and, and it's going to be even more important when we can't use additives in the, in the nursery phase and uh, some of the biology is telling us that, that as well. From a pathogen elimination standpoint, Lisa and Megan and Steve really been focused on eradicating mycoplasma and helping you get ready from our Kansas industry standpoint. 
uh, and having an attitude towards pathogen elimination. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to, I, I think we have some of the Iowa Select people here. Within their production system, they've really focused on improving biosecurity and eliminating pathogens as well. From a big system perspective in the U.S., I got to hand, hand them credit uh, in, in being in the middle of Iowa and in, in the middle of the pig dense areas on the focus and the resources that they're focusing on as well. And then just finally, as we wrap it up here, I uh, uh, want to point out all the work that's going on. Uh, I, all the people that are working on Jose and, and a bunch of people across both beef and swine focusing on ksuantibiotics.org has a lot of the VFD type thing, uh, information, lots of links and those kind of things from an antimicrobial resistance standpoint uh, and, and lots of good information extending on. Uh, trying to bring this information down to a practical level in a, in a usable format mm -hmm. that's easy to access. And so, really want to thank you there.